deep dive event variables. Sometimes in Google Tag Manager, you need to be able to take an action at a very specific time. Event variables can help with that. You'll see exactly how to use them in this lesson. Let's take a look. All right, it's a deep dive into event variables. The lesson objectives for today are to cover two of the event variables that you'll see back in Google Tag Manager. One is called the auto event variable. The other is the custom event variable. You will know how to use both. The journey so far, we are currently on event variables. We just covered JavaScript variables, including JavaScript variables and custom JavaScript variables. And then of course, coming up, we will be moving into cookies and all sorts of other fun stuff with Google Tag Manager. But today it's all about event variables. And we're really gonna make this one of those lessons where you should know about this. You probably will not use it all that often. However, this particular uh, one of these, actually, I should say, particular variables are really, really useful. The other one, not so much. So we're going to cover those kind of quickly here uh, and let you see both. So we're going to move into Tag Manager first, and I'll show you where these are. So we're in Google Tag Manager. As we scroll down, we're going to go to New Variable, because this is one of our user-defined variables. And uh, the one that we're talking about is Custom Event. The other one is Auto Event Variable. I'm going to start with Custom Event, because it's one that you would see, uh, but you probably really don't need. So we're going to, uh, I'll show you why here in just a second. So it's going to be CE and then I'm just going to call this event. You can see there's no configuration. Now here's what this does. Notice it says CE as in custom event and then event because that's just what I'm calling it. So I'm going to save this. Now watch what happens. So I'm going to go refresh and now I'm going to refresh our actual page and I'm just going to look in our variables. And what we're looking at here is in our variable, we see where it says event gtm.js. Well, look what this says, CE event gtm.js. So technically, you already have the underscore event variable, which is gtm.js. You also have the event variable down here, which is built in. That is your gtm.js. And you have the ability to do a, a regular event, the custom event, which is gtm.js. But it's really redundant. It does the same thing. You'll see as I go from uh, point in time to point in time to point in time, they all equal the same thing. So this is one of those variables that I wanted you to be familiar with to the point to realize you probably will never need it. Uh, I can't think of a use case offhand where you would need it because you already have a built-in event variable that is here. Uh, and you also have the underscore event that is here. So you already have access to the event name itself. You don't really need to ever use this. Um, so again, this particular one, you don't really need, and that's why we're covering it so that you don't think, oh, well, what's the use case for this? Because sometimes the unknown becomes a thing. Uh, but in this case, again, custom events, you set them up, they pass back the event name, but you already have variables that give you what you need. Speaking of, let's talk about auto event variables. Now, auto event variables, right in here it says variable type. You've got the element, the element type, the attribute, classes, ID, target, text, URL, then you've got history. Well, guess what? All of these, if they sound somewhat familiar, they should because they already exist. These are already built-ins uh, that already exist, right? You already have them in Google Tag Manager. So if I go to like class or ID, I don't need to define a class or ID because if I look through here, I already have, uh, there's my click class. In fact, let's just click on an actual link. So let me pull this down and get something we can actually take a look and see what a class might be. All right, so there we go. So now here, oops, we'll go to variables. So I've got, uh, oh, still no click classes on that one. Let's find out. There we go. There's something I had to click classes. This is a hyperlink that we clicked on. So the click class already in there, right? This was the class that was assigned to that particular click at that point in time. This was the text that I clicked on. So the click text was already in there. The click URL was already on there. Uh, the place that I was actually going when I made the click. So all of these are already built in. You don't need to recreate them. So why are we covering any of these? Well, really custom event is just there to let you know that you probably don't need it. So don't worry about it. It's, um, my guess is it's more the legacy uh, type thing that uh, still exists because some people might have it in a legacy installation, but you don't need it. Uh, this, the auto event variable, there is one particular setting that might come in pretty handy, and that is this one, element attribute. And this is the one I wanted to show you. Let's, so let's continue. Let's say I wanted to set up a add to cart. So I'm going to go to my awesome product here. And now that I'm looking here, I want to be able to set up a click as a trigger, I want to be able to set this up as a trigger to say when they click on add to cart, uh, I want to, let's just fire an e-commerce, um, free enhanced e-commerce that fires add to cart. Now I'm not going to set up the tag here because this is really about the variables and the, and the triggers that we'd set up. But what I would want to do is I'm going to sort of control click here. And when I do that, 
I can go into my gtm.click. So this is where I actually made that click right here. And when I do that, I can see here the, the details. Again, I can just right, right click and then inspect as well. I can see the details around this particular click. So I see that the button type was submit, which was why I'm getting these form submits that are triggering. I can see the name equals add to cart. The value is 75. The class was single add to cart button, button, alt. Uh, so you can see all of those different details. Now, what do I have access to? What does Tag Manager have access to at this point in time? I would look at my variables to see that. And I can see the click classes are there. And I could very well say, hey, if click class contains add underscore to underscore cart, then go ahead and fire the add to cart or when click text contains add to cart. But maybe one day somebody changes those things, my tracking would break because the triggers wouldn't be the same. So what I'm going to bet on is that this name section here where it says add to cart doesn't actually change, but I don't have anything here that is returning the name. I don't have anything in here that's returning the name. Enter the auto event variable, specifically the element attribute, because what happens is these are attributes. So I've got name as an attribute, I've got value as an attribute. Uh, what I'm gonna be is uh, typing in the attribute of name, because I want that returned, and I'm just gonna save it. These are actually really easy to, say, to set up here. Say AEV, and this is the name attribute. So we have that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this. And I'm going to, uh, let's just go back to shop. That'll automatically refresh our page. So we have the most recent one. I'm going to click on here. And then again, I'm going to control click here. So I, and what I'm doing is not really caring too much about this, but I want to see in tag manager when I actually uh, make this click, what event is it? So I can check a look at what the variables exist, uh, what the variables values I should say are at that point in time. So now I'm at number 12 there. I click control click. There's number 13. Uh, so I'm going to do that. There's my form element. Also number 14, the actual gtm.click that was registered. So I'm going to go through them, start with number 13, see what we can see at this point in time. I click on variables and there's my AEV name and it doesn't have anything. Okay. On the form element, it didn't have anything, but on the click itself, look at that. The click itself does because the click picked up this attribute. I could also create one for value if I wanted to, so I could see add to cart and value coming through if I wanted. So now what I can do is I can set a rule that says when this variable equals add to cart, right? Or when it contains add to cart or whatever uh, rule I want to set up around this variable, when this happens, uh, let's say add a click, then add to cart, process and add to cart uh, data layer push maybe for enhanced e-commerce and then report it to Google Analytics or Facebook, wherever else I'm reporting that particular flow step. But this is how I'd grab that information. So auto event variables, you won't use all the time, but when you will, it will be to pull out an attribute that is not otherwise being tracked. In this case, value is the attribute here. Name is the attribute here. Uh, type technically also an attribute you could pull if you wanted. Uh, but again, class. So, you know, we have all of those, uh, you know, class and ID, all the typical ones are already in there. And you could very well do what you need to do with what you already have. So before you create additional variables, see what's already uh, kind of in the hands of Google Tag Manager, if you will, uh, when it comes to what Tag Manager can actually see at the point in time you want something to happen. And then if it can't see something, then you can add on a variable to give you additional visibility, in this case, uh, to pull in that name attribute so you can see even more details coming through, in this case, the actual name as it was defined uh, here in the uh, attribute. Now that we have done that, we have covered both auto event and custom event. Remember, custom event is there, but you just won't need it because you already have built-in uh, variables that do exactly the same thing, so you just don't need it. Auto event, most of the variations of auto event are also built in. So you already have all of those with the exception of anything that's kind of customized or unique to your particular setup. And that's just where you have an attribute that you don't have access to that's a built-in. You can use the auto event element attribute to actually assign that and pull those details out if and when you need to. And of course, that is what we just covered. Your lesson resources, CMO's variable guide for Google Tag Manager. It's a great guide to all of the different variables. He keeps it updated. So make sure you take a look at that and sort of lock down what's available to you in Google Tag Manager. Like I said before, half of this tool is just knowing what's possible. And uh, as you know, what's possible, it doesn't mean you have to be an expert in all the different aspects of it, but just knowing what's possible already 
pulls you further down the line. It helps you to actually understand how this tool can come together. And then like in this case, maybe one day when you need something where there's a, a custom attribute, you, you'll know, hey, there was this event variable with this auto event variable. And, and uh, you could reference a post like that to figure it out. Uh, also take a look at his guide on tracking form engagement. It's got some interesting things on there as well, uh, where you might even, if you check the comments, I believe there's something about auto event tracking in there as well. Your next steps, practice using, if you have not already, your browser dev tools. You've seen that we have done that a lot here in this course. Uh, so go through, right click, inspect, take a look at the attributes that are there. Maybe find something that you can use that might be useful for you to pull in. Sometimes you just don't know that you even had access to something that's just sitting there. And now you know an auto event variable set to the element attribute will actually help to pull it into Tag Manager. And of course, be sure to check your existing variables first because the value that you're looking for may already be in there, or you might be able to use a combination of values that are already available for you. And as always, check with your developer. Maybe they can help you out with some of this as well. And of course, once we've got those done, we are ready to move on. There you have it, deep dive event variables. At this point, you should be able to use event variables to control the timing of when certain actions are taking place in Google Tag Manager. Once you're ready, let's move on to deep dive setting cookies in GTM.